Egypt, the heart of the Middle East. A sea of sand, harboring desiccated dunes, reflects an eternal baking sun. Life within this desolate landscape appears impossible. But beneath the surface, Egypt is very much alive. Animals rule the land, the surrounding seas and waters, along with the skies. Although ancient civilizations have all but disappeared, the creatures that sculpted dynasty upon dynasty continue to thrive. Egypt is a country synonymous with pharaohs, pyramids, and above all, desert. Situated in North Africa, it's surrounded by two major seas. To the north, the Mediterranean, and to the east, the Red. But these vast bodies of water play little part in fueling the huge array of life found within Egypt's sand-covered center. With an annual rainfall of just 80 millimeters, often far less, remarkably, this region also lays claim to one of the world's earliest and longest lasting civilizations. Ancient Egyptians believed that creatures had power over nature controlling the sun, the moon, the day and night. And one in particular was seen as the Lord of the Water. The key to surviving this harsh desert life. Possibly the most influential creature throughout Egypt's ancient history is the snake. With its distinctive side-winding movement and unique horn-like protrusions, the horned viper is one of the most easily recognizable snakes of the desert. Because the sand is loose and offers little grip, the viper contracts its muscles and flings its body sideways. This way, only two points of its body remain in contact with the ground when traveling across the dunes. Despite growing to just 60 centimeters long, horned vipers still pack a venomous punch. Without treatment, a bite can be fatal to humans. It's thought these horns may protect the snake's eyes, as well as break up its outline against the desert terrain. So revered was this species, Egyptians even embalmed their bodies. This act was a sign of devotion to the snake gods and a way of earning their protection. Preferring to hunt at night, this individual seeks shelter from the morning sun. However, another reptile is only just waking up.
This lizard, also known as a skink, would make an ideal meal for a viper. Short, stubby legs and a thick, square-shaped body aren't obvious attributes for speed. And with nowhere to hide, the outcome of this duel looks set. But what it lacks in athletic appearance, the lizard more than makes up for in style. A torpedo-shaped snout, smooth, shiny scales and paddle-like feet offer clues to one of nature's greatest disappearing acts. Now you see it. Now you don't. Also known as a sandfish, the skink literally swims through the sand whenever faced with danger. It isn't just lizards that utilize the desert's vast concealment resource. Sand boas are also built for borrowing. A stout body, small eyes and hard scales protect their skin from the abrasive substrate. However, this relatively small, non-venomous snake employs another unique defense tactic. To confuse predators, the sand boa leaves part of its body exposed. Its head-shaped tail is armored with tough scales. This less vulnerable body part can withstand most attacks, giving the snake time to react or flee. One serpent, however, needs little in the way of disguise or protection. Growing to just under three meters long, the Egyptian cobra is the largest snake of the region. And the most deadly. Its venom is so powerful, it would kill a fully grown elephant in just three hours. Once bitten, the victim's nervous system is quickly paralyzed, shutting down the ability to breathe. Along with small mammals and lizards, other snakes are also on this hunter's menu. This buzzard thinks it's homed in on breakfast. But the cobra has a unique trick up its sleeve. After rearing up, it flattens its neck to look even larger and intimidate the predator. This classic hooded pose is achieved through elongated ribs that extend the loose skin behind the cobra's neck. The display works. The buzzard decides to give this potential meal a miss. In ancient times, the Egyptian cobra was the symbol of divine rule and featured heavily on the headdresses of the pharaohs. It's even said to have played a key role in the downfall of the very last dynasty. Around 2,000 years ago, Egypt's last pharaoh, Queen Cleopatra, committed suicide through the bite of a cobra. This monumental act 
brought an end to over 3,000 years of continuous dynastic rule. Egypt lays claim to one of the earliest known civilized societies, established approximately 5,000 years ago. One creature, however, predates any human arrival by several million years. The Nile crocodile has remained unchanged since the days of the dinosaur. Reaching a length of five meters and weighing around 400 kilos, it's the second largest reptile on the planet. A powerful jaw, full of sharp conical teeth, enables it to kill almost any creature within its range. Nile crocodiles were also revered. They inhabited temple ponds, were adorned with gold bracelets, and fed the finest of meats. The Nile. The Nile meant everything to the Egyptians. As well as providing drinking water and irrigation for crops, once a year, the river miraculously flooded, left behind once the water retreated. This predictable flood cycle allowed staple food crops like wheat and... Keeping the crocodile god happy was key to survival. Some years, the flood failed to arrive and thousands of people starved. As night draws in, the desert temperature drops dramatically from just above 40 Celsius to below 10. Avoiding the heat of the day is vital for many creatures. And some have adapted to lead a nocturnal life. At first glance, the Egyptian lesser jerboa could easily be mistaken for an undersized kangaroo. But this 10 centimeter long burrowing mammal is actually a member of the jumping rodent family. Like its rat relatives, the jerboa is an omnivore, relying on plants, seeds and insects to survive. Because water is so scarce, they've done away with the need to drink. They obtain all the moisture they need from food. After a quick snack, it's time for a sand bath. This removes oils and any clogged dirt from their fur. Tail grooming is another important activity. Extending up to 25 centimeters long, this fur-tipped appendage can be nearly three times the jiboa's body length. This tail provides essential balance when having to move at higher speeds. As at night, predators are always on the prowl. Horned vipers have hollow, hinged fangs and specialize in ambush. They can strike at lightning speed, injecting their victim with venom. 
a small mammal would be killed in a matter of seconds. Unaware of the nearby threat, the Jaboa repairs one of the many entrances to its burrow. However, the snake's potential victim still isn't within striking range. As the viper creeps closer, its cover is blown. With hind legs four times the length of its front, the Jaboa can cover more than a meter in a single jump. Reaching speeds of almost 25 kilometers an hour. Even the fastest snake in the world, the black mamba, isn't able to keep up with that. The ancient Egyptians didn't only worship and respect large animals. One of the region's most recognizable invertebrates played a major role in their day-to-day -day lives. The scorpion and its toxic tail also made its mark on the earliest settlers of the Nile region. Not only was it used as a king's name, it became the symbol of a goddess, Seket, the healer of venomous stings and bites. Like spiders and all other arachnids, scorpions have eight legs. These are accompanied by a pair of powerful pincers, used for grabbing and tearing up prey. Compared to other scorpions, the 10 centimeter long death stalker is slightly built. However, its thin tail and slender pincers are more than compensated for by its deadly sting. It is possibly the most venomous scorpion on the planet. This individual has spotted a potential meal. Camel spiders aren't true spiders. Although they share the same number of legs, the similarities end there. They lack both the silk and venom glands of their namesakes. Instead, camel spiders rely on speed, stealth, and a pair of powerful, oversized jaws to subdue their prey. Relative to size, they have the largest jaws of any creature on the planet. They are the great white sharks of the arachnid world. Camel spiders shy away from the desert sun. So every few days they dig a new burrow in which to shelter during the day. This bulldozer method of shifting sand and rocks ensures the job is done swiftly. While the camel spider focuses on the finishing touches to its lair, the scorpion moves in. With the battle over, it seems venom has triumphed over brute force. The subdued victim is dismembered. The cooler night air draws out other desert-dwelling creatures, including a unique mammal that has also evolved to avoid the need to drink. The fennec fox is not only the smallest fox in the world, 
It's also the smallest member of the dog family. With a body length of around 30 centimeters, it can weigh less than a kilo. Oversized ears not only provide excellent hearing, they also dissipate body heat. A beetle scuttling across the sand stands little chance of avoiding this predator. The fennec's highly sensitive ears can even locate prey moving underground. Most meals are obtained through digging. Scorpions are a favorite meal. The fox's small, needle-sharp teeth are quick to disable their defensive stings. Dogs were highly regarded in ancient times. They represented Anubis, god of the underworld and protector of tombs. Along with guarding palaces, they also accompanied pharaohs when hunting. The Saluki is the oldest known breed of domesticated dog and was considered to be the royal dog of Egypt. Similar in form to a greyhound, they're built for speed. Hitting almost 65 kilometers an hour. Desert rabbits, a favorite quarry, stand little chance of escape. The Lukis were so revered, their bodies were often found mummified alongside those of their embalmed pharaoh masters. Although the River Nile has offered a lifeline to Egypt's residents for thousands of years, a more recent feature has become a haven for the region's abundant wildlife. At 550 kilometers long and 35 wide, Lake Nasa is one of the largest man-made lakes in the world. Around 50 years ago, the River Nile was dammed to create this enormous reservoir. This brought an end to the often unpredictable flood levels further downstream. Ancient Egyptians believed the annual deluge of fast-flowing water was a gift from the gods. They had no idea. Its origin lies almost 3,000 kilometers further south. Approximately 90% of the Nile's water originates from the Ethiopian highlands, which receive around 2,000 millimeters of rain each year. It's along these tiny tributaries that fertile soils are washed downstream before entering the longest river on the planet.
Today, the damming of the Nile prevents the silt-rich water from traveling further downstream. Instead, Lake Nasser and its wildlife benefits from the millions of tons of sediment deposited here each year. One creature benefits from Lake Nasser's shoreline more than most. Nile crocodiles don't reach sexual maturity until around 10 years old. This female's liaison with a male two months ago was a success. The lake's sandy shore is perfect for excavating her nest. After reaching a depth of around 50 centimeters, she starts to lay. Approximately 50 eggs are deposited in the nesting chamber. Finally, they're covered with sand. It'll be three months until our youngsters are ready to hatch. Until then, she'll remain close fiercely guarding the site. Birds have also capitalized on Lake Nassa's vast ecosystem. Around a hundred separate species have been recorded living along these shores. Herons specialize in hunting fish and are masters of effortless flight. Ancient Egyptians associated these majestic birds with the rising sun. They named it Bennu, the ascending one. The heron is said to be the original phoenix, born out of the much later Greek myth. It was first thought this delta-winged pose facing the sun was purely a way of drying or warming their wings. Except the rapid panting actually points to the heron trying to cool down. It now appears this individual is creating a hostile temperature for parasites, taking refuge underneath its wings. At around 25 centimeters long, the pied kingfisher is a medium-sized bird within its fish-hunting family. It is, however, the largest bird in the world capable of sustained hovering without a headwind. This technique enables it to pinpoint fish in deeper water, away from the shore. Kingfishers can judge both the size and depth of fish swimming below. Less than half of all dives prove successful.
But this time, the mission pays off. The kingfisher beats its catch against the branch. Not only does this ensure the fish is dead, it also helps break the bones, making it easier to digest. Lake Nassau didn't exist in ancient times, but another body of water did play a crucial role in supporting life in the region. Egypt's Red Sea was created around 30 million years ago, when the Arabian tectonic plate broke away from the African continent. In ancient times, transporting goods over land proved difficult. But the Red Sea provided Egypt with easy access to Africa and the Far East. With no natural rivers feeding in fresh water, the Red Sea is one of the most saline bodies of water in the world. The aquatic creatures and coral reefs living here have adapted to life in salty water. Around 10% of fish species found in the Red Sea don't exist anywhere else. One particular sea serpent was held in high regard in ancient times. Egyptians offered eels to Atum, the creator god. Their mummified remains were then buried in bronze boxes. Giant moray eels can grow to a length of three meters. This opening and closing of the mouth ensures a steady flow of water across its gills. Morays usually hunt at night, using their excellent sense of smell to track down and ambush prey. Garden eels live in colonies of up to a thousand individuals. Growing up to 40 centimeters long, they feed on plankton and any small fish that happen to pass by. Using their tails, they burrow into the seabed. This becomes the permanent home which they never leave. As well as providing a solid anchor, these holes provide the perfect retreat from predators. This giant actually poses no threat to garden eels. Whale sharks are the largest fish in the world. growing over 20 meters long and weighing up to 34 tons. Remarkably, they survive on a diet of tiny plankton. Traveling at a modest five kilometers an hour, they can sift over 100 liters of water every minute.
fine filters, also known as gill rakers, trap anything edible over a millimeter wide. Closer to land, a wash of green lines the shore. Mangroves have evolved to flourish where other plants are unable to survive. Their specialized roots filter out the salt from the seawater, which would otherwise kill off most plants. Any salt that is taken up is excreted through the leaves. All plant roots require oxygen, but in water-saturated soil, there is virtually no air available. Mangroves have developed a unique way of coping. Specialized breathing roots protrude above the ground to absorb oxygen at low tide. This dense network of roots not only helps stabilize the fragile coastal sands, it also provides a safe haven for many shore-dwelling creatures. Male fiddler crabs have an oversized claw This violin playing motion of the small claw, moving over the large when feeding, has given rise to their common name. Female fiddler crabs are more equally balanced than males. They can feed twice as fast, spitting out pellets of sand once any organic material has been sifted out. This frantic waving is all about attracting a mate. Females prefer males with larger claws and a higher wave rate. The faster the rhythm, the greater chance of outdoing the competition. These giant claws are also used in displays of dominance and fighting prowess. Stealing a smaller male's burrow is a daily activity in fiddler society. Approximately 2,000 years ago, trade routes were set up between harbors on the Red Sea and the major cities on the Nile. Merchants faced journeys of more than 300 kilometers across baking deserts. And only one creature made these missions possible. Fully laden, camels can cover up to 30 kilometers a day. They can go without food or water for up to a week. But the trader's journey took at least 10 days. Even the so-called ship of the desert would need to drink. Fortunately, even in the heart of nowhere, fresh water can still be found. Egypt contains a major part of the world's largest fossil water reserve, 
the Nubian Aquifer, an estimated 150,000 cubic kilometers of fresh water lies trapped beneath the Eastern Sahara Desert. 50,000 years ago, the climate here was much milder. When temperatures increased, the land turned to dust. However, rainwater trapped within the sandstone bedrock remained. Today, many lakes and springs lie dotted across the parched landscape. And one particular tree acts as a flag to these life-rich zones. The acacia is possibly the hardiest tree on the planet. It endures dry desert temperatures in excess of 50 degrees Celsius, as well as frost. Although the riverbeds in this region have long since dried up, the acacia obtains its water needs another way. Its roots can extend up to 80 meters below ground in order to access the aquifer. Little wonder the ancient Egyptians labeled this species the tree of life. Sap-sucking thorn bugs blend into the acacia's spiny branches. while painted lady butterflies also move in to feed. This offering of nectar is crucial to the tree's survival. As it depends heavily on insects for pollination. Oriental hornets capitalize on spring water that has made its way to the surface. For thousands of years, oases like these have been a lifeline to the desert's creatures. people of ancient Egypt worshipped and deified many creatures. But if one could offer hope for their diminishing future, it was a tiny beetle. Rolls the sky. After burying the boar, the female lays an egg inside the sphere. Around four weeks later, a new beetle miraculously appears from the ground. As well as being linked to the movement of the sun, the scarab also represented rebirth. It became linked with Kepri, one of the oldest creator gods of their religion.
Ancient Egypt's dynastic line came to an abrupt end after it succumbed to Roman control. However, the Lord of the Waters' unbroken lineage continues, 2,000 years on. Having stood guard for more than 12 weeks, this female Nile crocodile receives her cue. A mouth designed for crushing bone and tearing flesh suddenly becomes a gentle cradle. Her maternal instincts are so strong, she gently carries her babies to the water. With up to 50 hatchlings, Nile crocodiles are around 30 centimeters long when first hatched and will double in size the first year. Although they can hunt for themselves, for the next two years, their mother will continue to protect them. By then, they'll be over a meter long and be big enough to stand up for themselves. Egypt is a land of legacy, ancient dunes, and above all, life. For thousands of years, creatures have dominated these desert sands, ruling the surrounding waters, even sculpting the beliefs of man. While human generations come and go, the wildlife here stands strong. Egypt's desert dynasty of animal kings and queens continues to live on. <laughs>